This exercise is designed to walk you through how to complete inventory problems from Chapter 6. So we've learned about different cost assumptions and inventory management systems, but the goal of each of these problems is always going to be the same. We want to answer two questions for a retail firm that is buying and selling things. What did the stuff that I sold cost, namely what is cost of goods sold, and what is the value of stuff that I still have left, namely what is my ending inventory? So let's actually get started by examining a set of purchases and sales for the Leftorium. Note that I call purchases made at the same time lots. So let's go through the perpetual method first. The trick to the perpetual method is to keep track of your current inventory balance by stacking the different lots in order in which you bought them. I actually recommend setting up four columns when doing a problem like this, a column for the date of the transaction, a column for your purchases and sales, and a column to keep your running totals. Next, create a line for each of your transactions. In this case, we have five. Now you want to write in your purchases, including both the quantity and purchase price, as well as your sales, but you only want to include quantities for now. So let's go ahead and do that. So this exercise says that we started off with two items, and those had cost $10 a piece. And then we made a couple purchases. We made one on November 1st, and that purchase involved three units, and those were $11 a piece. And we made another purchase on November 7th, and that was also for three items, but those cost $12 a piece. Now let's actually write in our sales, but we're going to leave the uh, prices alone for now. So, so we made one sale on November 3rd, and that was for two units. And we just made another sale on November 9th, and that was a sale of one unit. Now let's start to work out our running totals, and that's going to help us apply our cost assumptions to figure out which items were actually sold. So at the beginning, we know that we're just starting with the balance of these two units. Now next, when we make that first purchase, we still have those two units worth $10 a piece, but we also now have these additional three units that are worth $11 a piece. So we're actually going to start out with the uh, FIFO method, but really the only difference between these two is whether you pull each sale from the top or the bottom. So under FIFO, uh, we're going to pull from the top, and we'll see later that we're going to pull from the bottom under LIFO. So let's take this sale on November 3rd. At this point, we have five items. Two from the older lot at $10 each, and three from the newer lot at $11. Since we're using first in, first out, we're going to pull from the top, and we're going to assume that the older two items were sold. So at this point, we're going to say that those $10 items were sold, and now our balance is only those three that are worth $11 a piece remaining. Next, we update our balance for the new purchase on November 7th, keeping things in order. So now we have those still, we still have those three units at $11 a piece, uh, but now we have another three units at $12 a piece. For the sale on November 9th, we're going to again pull from the top. And the oldest items are the ones that cost 11 now, so that's going to be where we pull the sale from. So we're going to say that that is uh, one of those units worth $11. And now what we're left with is two of those units that we purchased for $11 each, and we still have those three units worth $12 a piece. And so if, we're going, if we want to prepare some sort of summary, we can say that for sales, we sold three units, and those cost $31 total. And our balance is that we have five units left, two that cost $11, three that cost $12, and the ending inventory is $58. So in the next file, we'll actually move on to uh, an exercise um, using LIFO.